thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. A terror attack in Berlin earlier this week saw nearly 50 people injured and 12 dead. Among them were two Israelis, Rami and Dalia Eliakim. As the terrorists drove a truck through a crowded Christmas street, Rami was injured and Dalia went missing. Authorities finally identified her body Wednesday night as one of the 12 fatalities. Shortly after the attack, German Chancellor Angela Merkel said that it was most likely a terror attack, and then law enforcement released that the prime suspect was a Tunisian asylum seeker who had already been flagged as a possible jihadist. The Islamic State has since claimed the attack as their work. Tunisian national Anis Amri is named as the top suspect for involvement in the attack, and a 100,000 euro reward has been offered for any information leading to his arrest. Later today, the United Nations Security Council will vote on a draft resolution demanding that Israel halt all settlement activities in the West Bank and East Jerusalem immediately. The Egypt proposed draft mirrors language commonly found in resolutions targeting the Jewish state, including some that were already vetoed in 2011 and regularly since then. The UN has maintained the position that the settlements are illegal and have repeatedly asked for them to be stopped. Israeli UN envoy Dani Danon called the resolution the epitome of absurdity and of hypocrisy of the UN. He was referring to the fact that the resolution does nothing to target Palestinian incitement to violence and circumvents direct negotiations in favor of rewarding bad behavior. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu took to Twitter to call on the United States to veto the anti-Israel resolution later today. In America, the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations released a similar plea requesting that the United States, quote, unequivocally affirm that they would veto any one-sided condemnatory UNSC resolution on the Palestinian-Israeli issue if it is presented to the Council for a vote. The 2017-2018 State Budget and Economic Arrangements Law has passed in the Knesset after a marathon debate through the night. The budget for the next two years will total 907 billion shekels, 447 billion in 2017, and 460 billion shekels in 2018. The defense budget, the largest ministry in the government, was allocated 70 billion shekels. Despite cuts across most sectors, a 50% boost went to the transportation ministry. The funding is to cover the construction costs on two new light rail lines in Tel Aviv, a new light rail route in Jerusalem, an extension of the Haifa metro, a new line between Haifa and Nazareth, and a new train route between Khadera and Lod. As usual, the Ministry of Finance praised the new budget as one that helps all parts of society, while the head of the opposition slammed it as bad news for citizens. The Israeli High Court of Justice is giving the residents of Amona a deadline to sign a pledge that they will leave their homes peacefully. The court directive issued yesterday gave the residents of the West Bank settlement until 10 o'clock this morning to submit signed affidavits stating that they accept the compromise arrangement agreed to with the government. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is hoping to avoid a forced evacuation with scenes reminiscent of the violence that erupted during the evacuation of 2006, when several buildings were destroyed. The compromise would relocate 24 of Amona's 41 families to an adjacent plot of land, while the other 17 families would move to a nearby settlement of Ofra. The government asked the court for a delay to prepare temporary housing solutions for the families scheduled to be evicted. If the request is accepted, the new final date for the evacuation would be February 8, 2017. Former president and convicted rapist Moshe Katsav received a hero's welcome yesterday in his hometown of Kiryat Malachi. After Katsav was released on parole yesterday, he headed straight home where the disgraced former leader was greeted by excited well-wishers who rushed to embrace him and offer flowers as he emerged from his car with his wife Gila in tow. Katsav was released from Maasiyahu prison yesterday after state prosecutors declined to appeal Sunday's parole board decision to free him five years into a seven-year jail sentence. Under terms of his parole, Katsav is not allowed to speak to the media until December 2018 when his full seven-year sentence would have finished. He will also not receive the usual perks given to former presidents, such perks including in office, secretary, expenses for his residence, a car and driver, a daily newspaper, or a cellular phone with unlimited calls. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.